right, it's uh, Monday, June the 26th, and you guys know how much I like to walk around the lake. I mean, I just love to walk around the lake. I'll put a, usually a Bluetooth headset in my ear, and I'll listen to an audible book, and I'll just walk for 10 miles, and it's so therapeutic, but yesterday I did it with ankle weights, and I want to show you guys something. I don't know if you guys can see this, but you guys see that on my foot? <laughs> it is absolutely killing me. And um, it, the biggest problem is I can't walk around the lake. <laughs> so anyway, um, oh, it's all crooked, ain't it? Hold on just a second. Yeah, hopefully that'll work. It's not so crooked. All right. Anyway, um, you know, before... It's been a really, really busy day, but I just finished reading this book, and I've, I've, I've got to make a commitment that every time I finish reading a book, I've got to do a book report. Otherwise, I just will never get around to it. And so I did finish reading the book, and this one does, does not have Audible. And so that means that I've got to uh, you know sit down at night and read it, because I like to do multiple things at the same time. You know, it's preferable... That you got a book where you can listen to it while you're walking or exercising, and you're get, you feel like you're getting multiple things done at the same time, you know. But this one, because it didn't have Audible, I actually had to, you know, you know. But I try to do a little bit every night, right, before I go to bed. So this book, I would say, goes along with this book, which I did a book report on previously, right? This is J. Patrick uh, Shannon, the Montana Freeman, and then now that I finished this one, which is. Um, one Freeman's War in the Second American Revolution by Mark Emery. You guys see that? This is the one I'm going to do a book report on, but I'm going to read this one next. It's like volume two. It's uh, How I Beat Satan and the IRS by Mark Emery, right? And then I, I would say also that goes along with this is there's a interview that Mark Emery just did with Dan Peterson. Dan Peterson is another Montana Freeman that's on the outside and Dan Peterson knows Russell. Mark Emery knows Russell. We don't know where Dana is. Um, Dana is Russell's wife. I've been banned from speaking to Russell ever again. I don't know why. I didn't break any rules whatsoever. The, the warden is just an absolute reprobate. I, I'm very mad at the warden, to be honest with you. But, so, so not only these three books, but you got to go listen to that interview that Mark Emery did with Dan Peterson. It's a very well done interview. And, uh, I've listened to probably 40%, 50% of it. I've got to listen to the rest of it as I get time. Um, and then, what else? Oh, the website, onefreemanswar.com. And it's M-A-N, not M-E-N. Onefreemanswar.com. And uh, go check out his uh, Mark Emery's website. And he's got seminars and webinars and everything else. But this is going to be like my state of mind after reading this book. Okay. Uh, it's just going to be me sharing with you the thoughts that come to mind after reading this book because I didn't know what I was getting into. And you guys know the sovereign citizen movement. I got friends that might consider themselves sovereign citizens or other people would consider them sovereign citizens. Brady, I don't know if he considers himself a sovereign citizen, but Brady, uh, you know, knows a lot about the law. He has a specialty. He's the one who created the website. Uh, Kent Hovind is innocent, and I went through you know all of that with you guys. But he, Brady is very knowledgeable, knowledgeable, knowledgeable about sovereign matters. Alfred Adask is another one. But you know, I was in a discussion with Jan Dyer. Jan Dyer is the mother of Marine Sergeant that is spending 30 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. They said that he raped his daughter, but there's no evidence of that whatsoever, and that he was railroaded because he was a Christian patriot. There is no evidence. I hope you understood what I said. There is no evidence that he did that. There's no DNA. There's no circumstantial evidence. The only thing Charles Dyer was convicted on is the say-so of the child that was eight years old, and she was coached by a viciously vindictive wife that was upset that Charles was in a new relationship. And there's all kinds of circumstantial evidence to, to suggest that Valerie Dyer lied and coached the girl with pornographic images on a computer 
that in, ended up with uh, Charles Dyer in prison for 30 years. Matter of fact, we're doing a radio show tomorrow with Pastor Manning, and I'm praying, you guys pray with me, that Jan Dyer can get through because we're having problems dialing into that radio station. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to the book. Oh, the reason I brought up Jan Dyer. <laughs> so she gets a lot of advice on how to help Charles. And it, the same thing happened with Ken Hovind. There's a lot of silver bullet people that are into this sovereign citizen stuff, and they always think they got the answer. Now, no two sovereign citizens think they got the same answer. It's like taking your, you know, if you was to take your taxes to 15 different CPAs, they'd give you 15 different answers. And nobody ever gives you the same answer. It's the same thing with sovereign citizens. They all got their own little specialty way of doing things. I, I don't think they, they have the same story. At least that's my understanding. What Jan has come to learn after, I think Charles has been in prison seven years now, and I, um, I think it's seven. Jan said, well, you can just sovereign from jail. That, I thought I was just busted out laughing when she said that when I was talking to her on the phone. She wasn't talking to me, but she was talking to these people that give her sovereign advice. She said, you know, they, it, it simply doesn't work. It's like it might be right. I'm not arguing whether it's right or wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I, got, I got friends that are sovereign, so I'm not slamming sovereign people. Ed Brown is a sovereign, and I love Ed Brown. I love Elaine Brown. Ed Brown signs all his letters, Sovereign Ed Brown, right? I don't know any bigger sovereign than Ed Brown. I mean, I think he's like, you know, Mr. Sovereign of America, and I love him. I'm not saying that he's right or wrong. What I am saying is that we have a history here, and, you know, the analogy I would give is you're looking at the intersection and whether you want to go through the intersection, and what will determine whether you go through the intersection. You say, well, that you should go through the intersection if the light is green. So you study the light, and you take pictures of it, and you take pictures of it all around, and you realize the light is green. You ask your friends, everybody agrees the light is green. You start to go through the intersection. The other side, which is a tyrannical, satanic government, takes an 18-wheeler and T-bones you just as you get in the middle of the intersection, and they run all over you. Now, you say, well, I was right. The light was green. Yeah, you're right. Jan Dyer said, yeah, you can sovereign from jail. Uh, Leroy Schweitzer? I, I never met the man. Hold on. Dang. Wow. Leroy Schweitzer. I never met him, but everything I read about him, he was well respected on being some sort of genius with law. He set up his own township. They set up their own separate way of doing things away from the United States government. He, he perfected and cracked the code into putting liens. What, they, what that group would do, is my understanding, they somehow figured out a way to put a lien on a bad judge or a bad actor in government. They would put a lien on their property or their home, or I don't know what they did. They just put liens on their personal property, I guess. And when you have a lien on something, I guess it makes it harder to sell. I don't know. Well, anyway, after they put a lien on it, they somehow figured out a way to transfer the lien into a financial instrument that you could cash in on. And they used these financial instruments to actually buy Mercedes and cars and stuff. And, you know, I, I don't know all the details, but they do. And I guess they did it. And the government said that they're writing bad checks. But from their perspective, they said everything they did was in the law. Well, I don't know enough about it to make a decision. But even if you did write a bad check, that's not, the re that's not reason enough to put Russell Landers in prison for 43 years, 44 years. It's not reason enough to kill his son and his wife disappear. So I can't tell you if the Montana Freeman, because I don't know enough about all that lean and converting stuff to financial. They use a lot of fancy legal language. This book, I want to read some more stuff, okay? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, this is uh, page one introduction. I'm just going to read the first paragraph. This book tells the true story. Now, it was written by Mark Emery, but he said he changed the names of some people. I got a feeling that Rex, Rex Freeman, which is the main character of this book, is Mark Emery. Okay, this book tells the true story of an average, hardworking truth seeker who could not sit quietly and allow the fraud and abuse of power 
he was witnessing to continue without saying or doing something about it. So the book is based on actual experiences and substantive events. Some of the names of people and places have been changed to avoid further conflict. So for this reason, we'll just call this a novel. Nonetheless, it will likely change the paradigms of your belief systems and what you have been held to be true throughout your life. This is like a, a novel that's like a sovereign fairy tale almost. It's like if everything went well, you know, and... But in reality, and, and this, this is reality from Mark Emery's perspective, right? And Mark Emery's not in jail. He's running that website. But let's, let's think about some other people that stood up to the United States government. Where did uh, Leroy Schweitzer end up? Leroy Schweitzer, I think, was killed in ADX Colorado Supermax. He was tortured to death. Probably. I, that's, I, I believe that. But he definitely died in prison. And prison itself is enough torture to me. Um, Gordon Call. Gordon Call, uh, his son is spending his life in prison. I just communicated with Yori Call today, and I plan on like asking Yori Call a lot of questions, and I'm going to put out a lot of information on Yori Call, assuming I can develop a relationship with him. But Gordon Call was, there was a manhunt for him, and... It's believed that they cut off his left hand. He was screaming in pain, but that wasn't enough, so they cut off his right hand. They cut off both feet, and they tortured him. They were cutting off all his limbs when they finally got a hold of him. After a horrific shootout where many federal agents had been given the go-ahead to kill him, and they laid down a tremendous amount of firepower. And I guess they went inside the bunker. I don't know if it's a bunker or some sort of farm place. But when they failed to kill him after laying down all this firepower, I guess, you know, thousands of bullets, and I don't know, it, you have to understand the story. He, I guess he killed the sheriff when he came in the place. I, don't, I need to educate myself more about Gordon Call. But after they finally got him, they cut off all his hands and legs and burned the body. It's a horrific horror story is what it is. That is covered in that interview where Mark Emery interviews Dan Peterson, Right? And you need to listen to that. That's a good interview. Mark Emery is a good guy. The guy who wrote this book, I have a lot of admiration for him. But he's on the same path as Gordon Call. And we know what happened to Gordon Call. He's on the same path as Leroy Schweitzer. He's on the same path as Russell Landers. And, you know, Schaefer Cox is in prison. And he was doing that common law stuff there for a while, holding his own trial and stuff like that. We know that Ed and Elaine Brown are in prison. Ed, they tried to torture Ed Brown. Lonnie and Karen Vernon are in prison. So you say, well, all those people are in prison. Uh, what's your point? The point is that anybody who decides to be a sovereign citizen better expect, better be prepared to die. I'm already prepared to die, and I don't necessarily consider myself a sovereign citizen. I consider myself a free man. I don't know how... You know, you know... You know, like, the downside for when I consider whether I want to be, like... Rex Freeman or Mark Emery or, you know, like this book says, it's like it takes too much effort to, like, study all this law. And you say, well, you're a lazy son of a gun. It's like, no, I, I'm not lazy. I don't consider myself a lazy man. I got a lot of work. From the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm trying my best to put out videos and do things for our prison minister. But if I'm going to go, like, cut off all that effort and go dedicate myself to studying law, you know, it's like I'm not going to be able to live my life the way I want to. I got to become a special. I don't. I don't want to be a lawyer. I consider lawyers like the spawn of Satan. I'm never, you know, other than maybe Jeffrey Winehouse's lawyer. I've never met a good lawyer. E even uh, who's that lady, Orly Tate, who I thought was a good one? She ended up being a sellout when it comes to the birth certificate issue. She's supporting Trump. Trump. Trump sold out the birthers. She was the queen of the birthers. I'm not bad-mouthing sovereigns, and I have a lot of respect for Mark Emery, who wrote this book about Rex Freeman, and he called it a novel. But it's actually a true story, probably about the life of Mark Emery. As you go through this book, you're going to learn a lot of resources, and it's going to talk about, I believe it brought up Jack McLam. Uh, it talks about, you know, uh, his experiences throughout life and how he came to the belief system that these sovereigns are right. But 
you can tell that he became very educated and experienced about law and sovereign law and comparing it with biblical law and comparing it with federal law. And it's like, he, he's got a website that he set up called onefreemanswar.com and he sells seminars. What, you know, stop everything you're doing and come to my seminar and we'll share all this information. And like, <laughs> I just don't got the time. I barely had time to read your book, much less. And also, I'm just, I've never been inclined or interested in studying in detail all this legal junk. I mean, I just live my life as a free man. I want to be like the birds and the bunnies and the frogs and the horses and the Mustangs and the bears and, you know, I don't, I don't want to go like, you know, dig into 18 United States Code, Section 52, Code 3B. You know, let's, let's, let's get down and dirty with the specific definition of what, mean, what is meant by the crime of violence. Let's, let's determine in a legal way what the crime, you know, let's, let's study the Demaya Supreme Court. It's just not my thing, man. I don't really care. I want to go walking around the lake. I'd like to walk through the woods. But if you're into that sort of thing, Brady seems to be into it. Um, Ed Brown seems to be into it. Mark, Mark it. I, I just want to be free, and I don't want to have to like put all that crap in my head. I, you know, I'm trying to study my Bible. I'm trying to bury the Word of God in my head. I don't got, I don't got time to, you know, all this other stuff with 18 United States Code, whatever. Also, the the, the look. This was a very well-written book. I enjoyed reading it. It was like reading a novel, and you, you, you rooted for the hero because you don't like the government. You know the government's evil, and the government was going after him. The government targeted him. They tried to send him to prison for many, many years, and he did win to some extent, although at the end, he, uh, in order to avoid significant jail time, he takes a plea deal, and he, he like uh, takes a plea deal for, I think, making a bad check. I'd have to go back and refresh my memory, but I think he, I think he took a bad check. So... He admitted to making a bad check, so then he got out of prison. And uh, The only critique I would have is, as he's going through this story, he made prison sound like it's a cakewalk. And I guess for him it was. He said he didn't have to worry about washing his clothes. He said the food was good. And he made it sound like, you know, prison's no big deal. But that's not the impression I get. You know, when I talk to Schaefer Cox, man, I get a four-point shackling in a secret CMU prison. Let's talk to Hakeem Abdul-Shaheed. And let's talk about the torture he went in in a CMU prison. And so when he represents prison in this book, it was like, well, that was a great time in my life. I learned a lot. I got to study the Bible. They washed my clothes. I got good food. Uh, you know, I exercised well. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not the way I think about prison. I think about prison as um, guards yelling at you and abusing you, strip searching you, bend over. Uh, guards, you know, if you if there's, a, there's a movie... It's called Turned, I believe, T-U-R-N-E-D. It talks about sexual abuse in prison and how um, they turn straight men into homos and that there's even sexual abuse by the guards. And there was an example of it in that movie. I don't know uh, if that's the exact name, but I think it's called Turned. Okay, not only that, but you also have, they limit your communication. They won't let you see your family. Schaefer didn't see his family, uh, his two kids for six years until people came together and gave money for him to do so. So I, I think the representation that prison is not all that bad was, was kind of a romantic... You know, it might have been true for Mark Emery. He's the one who wrote the book, and who am I to argue with the guy who went through it? It's his life. But I'm just saying, I don't think of prison as some sort of place that I can go and get, th you know, three hots in a cot. I, that's not... No, no, no. Th prison is absolute hell, and I ain't going. <laughs> And so the representation of prison, I think, was not necessarily accurate for everyone. Might have been, might have been true for Mark. Um, I wanted to read something too. In the conclusion of his book, he says these are the things that we should do. And he is a Christian, right? A matter of fact, if he he says at the very end of his book, on the very last page, on the very last page, he says, "All glory and honor to my Lord Jesus Christ for making my life." <clears throat> this book and the thought of redemption possible. So he is a brother in the Lord, right? I, I, um, I recognize that, right? And he puts a lot of scripture in the back of his book in the appendix, although it's New King James. And you guys know what I feel about the New King James. I believe in the King James Bible. But here's the points that he makes near the end of uh, the book. He says, the USA, the USA, this is in the conclusion section, 
The USA will only survive if the people turn back to God, pray for guidance, courage, and his almighty, almighty protection, and do the following. One, turn off the TV and get your kids out of public school. Two, don't waste your time or money on party politics. The federal government is not your friend, no matter what color shirt the president is wearing. None of it addresses the core issues. I agree with that. Recreate your local government and courts. Read and study history, law, and the Bible. Get off your duff. Get involved and get others involved in restoring our heritage and law processes. Take control of your local government, working directly with your local sheriff. Understand who you are under God and separate yourself from the corporate democracy known as the United States. Breathe new life into the de jure, organic republic of the United States of America. You know, Ed Brown talks about organic law all the time, too. In addition, they, they tried to gas, <clears throat> they tried to gas um, with poison gas. They tried to gas Ed Brown to death. He's, he's going to be in prison. He's been sentenced to death by prison and his wife. I've also heard him say that if there was enough people in a county or in a community, they could set up a township and, uh, you know, there would be a chance at restoring a, a Republican form of government separate from this United States. It sounds to me a lot like uh, this free state project in New Hampshire. So I enjoyed the book. Um, I respect Mark Emery. I consider him a brother in the Lord. Uh, I wish he would use King James Bible version instead of uh, New King James, but, you know, that's not a showstopper. Um, I'm going to read his second book, How I Beat Satan and the IRS. I've said, he's got a newsletter. If you go to onefreemansward.com, he's got a newsletter and you can sign up. Um, he makes it, you know, he has done pretty well for himself as far as avoiding being tortured and burned to death. And he hasn't had any hands or legs cut off like Gordon Call. But his experience isn't the same as other people who have gone down the road he's gone down. It's possible that we may see uh, Mark Emery being targeted even more as he gets more and more popular, right? And he has been, he, ha he has a lot of talent. It takes a lot of talent to write this book. It takes a lot of talent to write this book. It takes a lot of talent to set up the website he set up. And plus he's got a newsletter. And if you listen to him conduct the interview with Dan Peterson, he does a very good job at conducting the interview. He, he know he does his homework and he's, uh, he's on top of his game. But that's all the more reason for the government to target him. And I want to help him not be targeted. I don't want to see him be targeted. And I don't want to see him, you know, be thrown in prison or tortured or anything else. But all the, all the sovereigns that I know have been targeted to some extent, you know. Um, I guess that's my book report. It, it went 23 minutes long. Um. I don't know if I have anything else to add at this point. I'm going to continue to educate myself, and I'll do it as best I can. Um, that's all i got to say. The last line of peaceful defense between a tyrannical government and the defendant is jury nullification. Educate yourself about jury nullification at fija.org, F-I-J-A.org.